Okay, so this is here. This is to answer the question about inverse sine for those that don't know what inverse sine is. Um, and I'll say that your math teacher will use some other term. So you might hear something else for, for inverse sine. Um, but in general, the idea is that if I am going to do sine in general, right, and you think about it on your calculator, and unfortunately, all my good calculators are back at school. But I have my sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? You can watch some other lecture about how to use sine, cosine, tangent in general and the other stuff. But if I was going to do something like um, sine of 30 degrees, well, I'd end up with, if I took sine of 30 degrees, I'd end up with 0.5 in my calculator. All right? So let's see if that works. 30 sine look at that 0.5 okay so to so inverse sine is undoing it so if i want to unsign a sign so if i were to do uh inverse sine of 0.5 i should get my 30 degrees back again let me see if that works so i hit second second sign and I get my 30 degrees back okay so th that's how they go back and forth now in your algebra the idea is that that's how you will cancel something out if you think about squaring something right if I said that x squared is equal to 9 well how would I cancel that out I would square root both sides the square root and the square cancel out Right, I unsquare the square and I get that X is equal to three. Well, it's the same thing with inverse sine. So similar to it is if I have sine of X is equal to, and I'll use the same numbers again, uh, 0.5. Well, how would I get this, the X by itself? I would inverse sine both sides. Okay, and so what happens is the inverses cancel out just like the square root and the square do, and I just have x on one side is equal to the inverse sine of 0.5. So then all I would do is I'd plug that in my calculator and I would end up with my 30 degrees. So that would be how I'd find the angle in here. All right, so that's just the general basic idea of how to do inverse sine.